and welcome to the DFM Pro Quick Start Admin Guide. My name is Tyler Reed, and I'm the Manufacturing Specialist here at Go Engineer. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to cover the basics of adminning over the DFM Pro product. First, we're going to cover licensing. We'll be talking about the standalone and network licensing options, how to request a license, and how to set up a licensing server. Then we're going to jump into the Rules Manager. The Rules Manager, as far as an admin is concerned, is really the heart of the program. And it's possibly the most important part of the program. Within the Rules Manager, we can edit rules, we can register new rules, we can register new databases, and we can create our own script rules. So we'll be covering each one of those topics. And then we'll end this session with a quick look at the XML reports, where they're located, and how you might edit your own XML reports. So let's jump into the software. The DFM Pro License Manager can be accessed through the Windows Start menu under All Programs, DFM Pro, DFM Pro for SOLIDWORKS, and then the DFM Pro License Manager. It will open up to the Status tab. I'm showing a successful registration right now because I'm running a node locked or a standalone license. When you first open the program, that status under authorization will say failed. We have a few tabs along the top here. The license setup tab is where you would first request a license. So if you're first using the software, you would select SOLIDWORKS, request license, fill out your company info. And if you use Microsoft Outlook, you would hit Outlook. And if you do not use Microsoft Outlook, you would hit other. It will generate a text file that you then send to Geometric. Once they send back a license file, you would use this menu here to read it in. On a standalone license, which is tied to a particular computer, it would be this first box. On a network license, you would actually use this box on all of the workstation machines to point them towards the server. On a network license, it's very important to request a license from the server machine. And on a standalone license, it's important to request a license from the particular machine you're going to be running the license on. In the event that you're using a network license on the server machine, you would want to open up the server settings tab and browse to your license file sent from Geometric here. Once you browse to that file, then you would select install the DFM Pro license service and then start the server. If you have any questions about that process, or if you run into any trouble during that process, it's important to contact your local reseller. Now that the licensing is handled, let's look at the Rules Manager. It's also accessed under the Windows Start menu, under All Programs, DFM Pro, DFM Pro Rule Manager. When the Rule Manager first starts, it will open up this DFM Pro 1 default file. This is not the file that your users are using by default. We have to open that up. Under File Open, you'll find it under C, Program Files, Geometric, DFM Pro for SOLIDWORKS, Rule Files, and it's this allrules.dfm file. So this is the default rules file that installs with DFM Pro. Comes with about 100 different rules that we see listed here. Just taking this row by row, we have a checkbox, and that enables or disables a rule for the end user. So when the end user uses the software and checks his file against the rules book, it will only check against files that are checked here. So this is a way of suppressing rules without totally eliminating them. The next row is the rule name. If we click on a row, we can get the description. The next column is the category. We can double click on column headers to sort by category. And these are categorized by the manufacturing type. Next column is a module. 
And a module is sort of a grouping of rules. By default, they're grouped by manufacturing type. But these modules can be made up any way you would like to as an admin. And we'll talk about removing and loading modules later so that you might understand why it would make sense to have rules loaded up and grouped together as a module. The last column here is criticality. This is the severity of the particular rule. And it's rated anywhere from critical, high, medium, and low. This criticality is going to be one parameter that you as the admin are going to want to control and oversee and maintain as your users use the software. So let's talk about editing rules. If I double click on a particular rule, we'll say this deep holes rule, I get some values and get some text describing uh, what the rule is checking for. So this rule in particular is it's looking at the hole depth versus the diameter ratio of a hole. We have an operator less than or equal to, and then a value, 8.0, and then a criticality, critical. All of these are editable. It's assumed that your users would not edit this file, and it's recommended that if the users are not meant to edit the file, that you restrict them from editing the file using Windows permissions. This particular value of eight for the whole depth to diameter ratio is the default value loaded up by Geometric. Geometric works with best in class industry leaders to develop all of the default rules. But that doesn't necessarily mean what works for them works exactly for you. So you do have the option to come in here and edit this as you work with your team and as you work with any of your manufacturing vendors, whether they be in-house or out-of-house, to fine tune these values. For the severity, this is going to be a great way for you as the admin or the engineering manager to relay the severity of a rule to your user. So you might make a blanket rule that says, if as a user you fail a rule that's critical, you must fix that in your design before you submit it for manufacturing. But if you break a rule that is listed as low, then use your judgment, fix it if you can, Another way of editing those rules is simply enabling them or disabling them by checking these boxes. There's a few buttons in here that we should concern ourselves with. We have the register rules, register database, and script rules. These are also available under the customized drop-down menu. Register rules brings up a list of loaded modules. So that's this column here. And see how they're grouped up, mill rules, injection molding rules, assembly rules, etc. This gives us a very easy way to remove groups of rules or load groups of rules together. So if your team is not planning on submitting files for die casting, and you don't really want the extra processing time it might take to have those die cast rules still included in your rule file, you might come in here and remove those. And we'll say same with casting and turning. We're simplifying our rules file here. If we make a mistake and we remove one that we did not mean to, or if we have some custom modules that we want to load up, we can select them from down here and load them back, or we could browse to them. Now these modules would generally be sent to you by your reseller. So by eliminating one or two of those modules, I've reduced my rule count from 100 down to 87. And these 87 rules might be more applicable to my particular processes than the 13 that I removed. The next option we can do is register database. And registering a database allows you to read in values for uh, particular hole sizes and acceptable materials. This does load up with a DFM Pro database, and your users may have to come in here and load this up by default. Just this generic DFM Pro database. If they do not do that, 
what they'll tend to see is that they'll fail any rule that depends on that database. So any rule that compares a hole against a specific hole size or compares a material uh, spec, they'll fail those rules. So if your users start to see that, then they'll want to come in and register that database. The last option here is script rules. And script rules allow you to create new rules using either the DFM Pro scripting interface or SolidWorks macro interface. This is for users that want to write their own custom rules. If you'd like more documentation on that, contact your local reseller. But in general, these rules will be written through your reseller. That about covers the rule manager. This is really the heart of the software, like I said. It may be considered the most important part of the software because for DFM Pro to be used efficiently, it has to be trusted by the engineers. And the engineers have to be given good results in the rules. So it's the maintenance of this rules manager and relaying the importance of using this software to your design team that really makes this product work well. The last thing we were gonna look at is the XML reports. Within the software, a user can generate an XML report so that he can check in the license and make some edits offline. Those XML reports are customizable using XML language. The default location of that XML template is going to be listed under C, Program Files, Geometric, DFM Pro for SolidWorks, Lang, English, and then it will be this DFM report.xsl. This is a file that you can edit using any XML editor to customize your style sheet. And again, if you would like some help customizing this, you can do that through your reseller. So that's a quick overview of the admin side of DFM Pro. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Tyler Reed, and I can be reached at tread, it's T-R-E-I-D, at goengineer.com. Thank you. Thank you.